I wonder who might be calling me this late. Moshi Moshi, you're talking to Zig. Seven days. Seven days? Oh boy, I know that one. Ah yes, seven days to die. Does your diet consist only of raw eggs and drinking water straight from the toilet? Or do you like constantly rummaging through garbage and finding weapons and toilets? Then I got the game for you. 7 Days to Die or 7D2D for the cool kids is a post-apocalyptic survival open world sandbox RPG. If you add MMO in the description, you would get the description for the day before. Why is the game called 7 Days to Die? Well, after every 7 days in-game time, a massive horde will be unleashed upon you that you should repel with a self-constructed base. Imagine Balloons Tower Defense 6 if you prefer, in which scenario the zombies are the balloons and you are the monkey. That should make it more relatable. With each consecutive 7 days, the waves will get stronger and more dangerous. The game is voxel based and that means you can destroy everything in your sight and create whatever building you can dream of. However, you still need to be aware of gravity, otherwise your building will crash down. You have several maps to choose from that are predefined or you can just play on a random generated world. To move around in this huge world, you can either go by foot, bicycle, car, or helicopter. The controls for said helicopter are special. The same kind of special that are the kids in a special ed class. Breaking news ladies and gentlemen, just now two protesters were seen planting dynamite at the headquarter building of the company The Fun Pimps. Our reporter Aviation Sigmach is on the site. What can you see Flying Sigmach? Thank you news anchor, as you can see from up here, the protesters already blew the building up and the explosions are still happening. Uh, something is wrong with my motor. Oh god, I'm losing control. Hmm, well, we switch to another reporter on site. For I Sigmach, what can you see? Thank you news anchor. A plane just crashed behind me and the tension is high and I don't want to alarm anyone but it seems like there is a plane heading for the building. It appears to be planning to crash into the tower. Oh the humanity, how could this happen? The general gameplay loop consists of breaking into different buildings, looting everything you can see, improving your gear and base with found resources and repeat. For the breaking in part, you have two options. Search for an opening or a door that is unlocked or if something is locked or blocked, just use the impact driver. Destroying a concrete wall, dismantling a car or lockpicking, the impact driver does it all. It is the best tool you can imagine. Digging for treasures in clay and dirt, impact driver. Fighting zombies, impact driver. That shit must have some quantum particle acceleration built into it, because it can destroy any physical matter or lock. And reproduces similar states to moments after the big bang. Why use a sledgehammer to tear down a wall, when you can just use an impact driver that disintegrates anything at a molecular level. The looting step includes fighting against the undead. Which brings me to the combat. Oh look mom, can we please get dying light? No honey, you don't need that, we have dying light at home. Combat in this game is the peak of melee fighting systems. It's a combination of the melee combat of Dying Light, Devil May Cry and Model Combat. Why have different attacks or finishers if you can have the same animation for eternity? You have a wide palette of different weapons to choose from. There are three different Digimon evolution stages of melee weapons. Stone, Iron and Steel. And each of them is completely unique and not just the reskin with different numbers. The weapons can have a level ranging from 1 to 6. You can craft every weapon at your base, granted you found enough books. Don't worry, I'll get to the fucking books very soon. The level 6 weapons can't be crafted though and only found in the world. These weapons can be enhanced through mods that have different effects. The same rule applies to guns. Eventually you will reach a state in the game 
where your primary weapons won't be a sharp stick anymore, but only guns. But who are you fighting against? The Americans. Luckily for us, undead Americans. And there are a few of them out there. You got your basic old school slow paced ones that are not really a threat to you. The average American McDonald's enjoyer that also sometimes happen to be a police officer, green boys and girls, Megumin enjoyers, and the wildlife, which exclusively consists of dogs, big pigeons, and bears. After you used appropriate self-defense, you can take what is rightfully yours. But what can you loot? Well, anything in garbage bags, toilets, underwear drawers, everything is fair game. And if you possess the god-given impact driver or one of its predecessors, the wrench or ratchet, you can also just dismantle everything for resources. Interior design, more like free loot. You know you're in America if you find more ammunition in the kitchen than actual drinking water. But why should you go through all that hassle? Because of the innate desire of mankind for improvement and prosperity? No, because of greedy merchants. These traders give you quests that can reach from tier 1 to 5. Each tier gets progressively harder, but the task will always be the same. The tasks generally consist of cleaning out a building, dig in the dirt for some kind of Nickelodeon time capsule, or find some supply of certain drawings. It's called hentai and it's art. The last part of the gameplay is the upgrading and crafting. That one is not so simple. You see, now it's time to talk about the RPG system in this game. You gain experience from killing zombies and doing quests for the merchants. After each level up you gain skill points that you can invest in one of many perks. You have your general role-playing attributes like strength, perception, intelligence and so on. But then you also have specific perks which can range from being better with a specific weapon to having a genetic mutation that gives you super regeneration. These perks are very strong and you feel a power surge each time you level up a combat related skill. Spending points on a perk also increases your chances to find a specific magazine. Here we are at my biggest problem with this game. These magazines are a requirement for crafting recipes. If you want to craft anything besides stone tools in this godforsaken game, you will need to find crafting magazines and let me tell you, there are a lot of them. To the point where I honestly hate it. Let's take salvaging tools as an example. You want the impact driver? Well then pray to Cthulhu that you find it through looting or you will need at least 47 salvage tool magazines to learn the recipe to craft it yourself. Even if you have almost infinite resources already available in your storage. This problem only exacerbates if you don't play solo but with multiple people. Get yourself a good friend. What if our bedrolls touched each other? <laughs> I'm kidding. Unless... Because then you definitely need to coordinate with each other who will get which crafting magazine. After managing to upgrade our gear, it's time to build something. And the building system in this game is great. You have more differently shaped triangle blocks available than I possess chromosomes. If you search long enough, you will also probably find some 4th dimensional dodecahedron structure in there. You can and are encouraged by the game to build death mazes that would make the architects of Deadman Wonderland die out of jealousy. Going up the slightest incline, you will be slowed to a crawling speed like a geriatric patient with several hip transplantations. However, going at a decline, you will experience the meaning of time dilation, because you will be nearing the speed of light. The game has many problems. It is janky and unoptimized as shit. If you try to host a server for a few friends, a 4070 and an i5-13600K with 32 gigs of RAM won't be enough to have this game running at a solid 60 frames per second. The UI is horrendous and looks like something that you would only use as a placeholder for an alpha. Oh wait, yeah. This masterpiece of gaming is still an alpha, since 2013 to be exact. But it is completely understandable for a tiny niche game that only managed to sell a few copies and doesn't have a big budget. This may come off as something negative, but I, for one, thank them for being honest with the glitch infested mess, instead of calling it 1.0 and then maybe patch it to a functioning state later down the line. But you can be mad at them for taking so long, especially due to their giant success in the alpha. Everyone will understand your point. Bugs and glitches are more than common. For example, I couldn't create a character and became this. Now. <laughs> It is not a high melanin content, but missing textures, because I can't see myself except my eyes, and my hands appear suspiciously Caucasian. Is this what I call having an identity crisis? 
being trapped in the wrong body. Maybe I am black after all. Truly a philosophical approach with fun pimps. Now, the last question remains. Will 7 days to die reach the 1.0 status before Star Citizen? Only my grandchildren will know. Now, I hope you liked the video and have a nice day. Goodbye! If a furry wants to legally identify as an animal, what is stopping me from shooting one and skinning it? Huh? Why is the TV on? God damn it. I just had a philosophical moment. This seems oddly familiar. Oh, I've seen this one. I know where this is going. Stop running away! Stop running away from me! Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Oh.